If I ask you to name the most famous psychologist, the majority will say Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud was born on May 6, 1856 in a Jewish family and spent most of his time in Vienna, Austria. He fled the Nazi occupation in the early days of World War II and arrived in London where he spent the rest of his life. He was the founder and the father of psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is one of the biggest branches of psychology. Psychoanalysis is a method for treating through dialogue between a patient and a therapist. Sigmund Freud was a celebrity in his time and was recognized by people on the street. He was also a controversial figure. He had huge ambitions, he was often dishonest, extremely brutal to his friends and terrible to his enemies. Freud was the first to state that our unconscious motives control our behavior. Not our conscious mind, but our unconscious mind. Freud was a genius and, at the same time, he was hated by many for his views and his theories. One of the biggest things that Freud brought to the world of psychology is his psychosexual theory of human development. He introduced the term psychosexual stages. He believed that a child's life is built around the concept of tension and pleasure. Pleasure he called the libido energy. I'm sure most of you have heard about that word before. Freud's theory based on the correlation between tension or other words stress and the amount of pleasure that a child experiences in his childhood. These two main factors control our behavior and makes us who we are. Freud's whole theory of psychoanalysis is centered around our childhood. Everything is rooted in our childhood, including our self-esteem, self-love, self-acceptance, ability to trust others, and ability to achieve our goals. We all went through specific stages of development. Freud called those stages psychosexual stages. Psycho is referred to our mind. Sexual refers to libido, the feeling of pleasure. If something goes wrong in one of those stages, if a child experiences too much tension or too much pleasure, he will be stuck in his childhood trauma and develop what Freud called a fixation. Fixation in childhood always has a lasting effect in adulthood. The right amount of pleasure and stress creates a healthy psyche, a healthy person. We need both. We need pleasure and stress in order to create a healthy psyche. Each of our childhood stages is associated with a specific age and a specific conflict that has to be resolved. In other words, a child should learn a specific task in each stage. Like in school, before going to the second grade, we have to learn the material from the first grade. Then a child can successfully move to the next grade or to the next psychological stage. If a child does not pass the stage successfully, does not learn the material from the first grade, then he will have problems in the second grade. Same with our psyche. Freud believed that the first five years of our life is crucial to the formation of adult personality. Again, if we can compare this system with our school system, the first five grades are very, very important. If you don't learn how to read and write, if you don't learn basic math, you will have problems uh, later in your middle school and high school. There are a total of five psychological stages that we all go through in our childhood. The best way to remember them is by the phrase, old age parents love grapes. Old stands for oral stage, age stands for anal stage, parents stand for phallic state, love stands for latent stage or latent period and grapes stands for genital stage. Freud's followers expanded his theory and today I will share with you the expanded version. The first, the foundational stage is the oral stage. 
this stage is 100% related to our topic of overeating. The fixation on this stage can cause eating addictions, smoking, alcoholism, biting fingernails, chewing toothpicks or pencils. People who use lots of sarcasm in their life also might have a fixation on this stage because sarcasm is kind of a symbolically biting humor. Again, fixation means that the child had some type of a problem or trauma in his childhood and was not able to pass this oral stage successfully. Breastfeeding is the main component for a newborn to pass this stage successfully. The part of the body where a child receives the biggest pleasure is his mouth. The oral stage of psychosexual development starts from the birth and goes till 12-18 months. A child enjoys sucking mommy's breast, a bottle, a blanket or a toy. He puts everything in his mouth. Taking a child away from his mother's breast too early can lead to serious addictions later. For example, in adulthood a person might develop problems with weight. Overeating and underweight problems can both be tied to this period. Let me tell you my personal story. I smoked cigarettes for more than 15 years. Smoking uh, is another type of oral addiction because it's also related to our mouth. That was my method of managing stress and anxiety in my life. I tried to quit many times. A few times I was able to stay without cigarettes for 2-3 months and then I was drawn back to them. My dad, my brother, most of my friends were smokers. It was the easiest way for me to manage stress and to hide my emotions. When I finally quit smoking, I gained 14 pounds within less than six months. I was going to the gym three, four times a week and tried to eat healthy. I tried different diets, I tried different exercises, but I always ate more than I needed, especially before bedtime. I replaced one oral addiction, smoking, with another oral addiction, the overeating. That was the only way for me to quit smoking. Extra weight was never a problem for me before. I did not believe that people cannot manage their weight. But once I stopped smoking, I realized that diet and exercise alone don't work for me. I had to dig deeper and find the cause of my overeating problem. For two years, I've been learning and researching about psychological reasons for overeating. I tried different psychological methods and exercises. I was learning how to identify my emotions, how to deal with them in a healthy way, and how to express my feelings in a healthy way instead of suppressing them with cigarette or with food. Once I stopped smoking, I realized that I was a very anxious person and for many years I was using unhealthy defense mechanism to suppress my feelings and hide my true emotions. Because I smoke a cigarette every hour or so, I did not even notice the level of stress that I had. I had to admit to myself that being in my 30s with a bachelor degree in psychology, with more than 200 hours of personal therapy and workshops, online trainings, I was not able to manage my emotions in a healthy way. I was avoiding them and suppressing them with cigarettes and later with food. Now I consider myself to be an expert in overeating psychology. Not only I know the theory about overeating psychology, but I have learned from my own personal experience. I struggled for two years. I was able to find uh, the reasons, the true reasons for my overeating or oral addiction. I was able to lose most of my excess weight. I still have four pounds to reach my goal, to reach my ideal weight, and I'm still working on myself. It's not easy. I want to be honest with you. It's not easy and it will take time, but I'm so happy. I'm glad that I decided to take the journey and to step on that path of self-discovery. 
Today, as I have lost uh, the extra weight, the excess weight, I have gained many unexpected benefits along the way. Lots of insights have came to my mind uh, during my journey. I was able to address my psychological issues related to overeating, and I was able to improve the relationships with myself, with my friends, and I was able to improve my romantic relationships as well. Now I can understand myself better. When I want to eat crackers or nuts, or when I want to chew um, chicken wings or meat from the bone, I know that I'm trying to suppress my anger. When I want to eat salty food, I know that it's time for me to pay attention to my inner critic. If you would like to know more about how to identify your emotions by the type of food you eat, please watch my webinar entitled, Tell Me What You Eat, and they will tell you what problems you have. The link is in the video description. If you like this video so far, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing with hitting the notification bell. I release two, three videos every week, so by clicking this notification bell, by subscribing, you will not miss any of my future videos.